everybody, it's Laura here again today. We're gonna to be using some of these awesome deco art products, the Americana um, acrylic paints, and my favorite, the decoupage, um, to create a work of art. So this work of art is inspired by Vasily Kandinsky. He is a Russian artist, um, was a Russian artist, and he did a lot of different kinds of art, but what we're gonna be doing here is gonna be an abstract piece. So let's just jump in and get started. This is a perfect, perfect project for kids or beginning artists or really just about anybody. Super fun. We're gonna be using the paints, brushes, scissors, some paper, a palette, and we're gonna start with just a piece of chalk. So he did a lot of stuff with circles and squares. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take our canvas here and we're gonna make a great big tic-tac-toe board on it because we're gonna color in each one of these four squares a different color. And that's kind of um, gonna be just our first step. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this blue paint, this is a really pretty turquoise blue, on my palette, and I'm just gonna color in this first square. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get another color and I'm gonna jump down to the bottom other corner because that's gonna give that a chance to dry before I come and do the squares right beside it. So I'm gonna now get my purple, and you could do these in any order that you wanted. And I'm just gonna use my same brush because it's okay if our colors mix a little bit and I'm gonna come down here to this corner and I'm gonna paint this square in with the purple. And then I'm gonna go over to another corner and I think I'll do orange next. So I'm gonna put some orange on my palette. Before you know it, my palette's gonna look like a rainbow. It's gonna be so pretty. And I'm gonna get my orange. And that's a really pretty combination, that orange and purple. I'm gonna do that in this corner over here. And then I'm gonna do this corner up here with a red. So I'm gonna put some red on my palette. And I'm gonna get this top corner done with the red. There we go. And now we'll do some pink. I love this pink, it's the carousel pink. It's my favorite. And we'll do the pink in between the purple and the red. So we're gonna do our best here to not mix our squares, but if they do a little bit, that's okay. Because this is gonna be an abstract art piece. So we're gonna get our pink in there. And then we're gonna go and do some green. I am gonna change brushes here because I don't want all of those colors to be in my green. I'm gonna get a different brush, get my green, do some green over here. This one actually looks brown, that's pretty fun. I love color mixing. And there we're gonna get some green. I'm gonna dip it in a little blue and the green a little bit here and get this one a little bit more texture, a little more of a fun look to it. There we go, and now I've got these three to do in here. So, I'm gonna do one in yellow, and I can use the brush that I currently have. I'm gonna shake it up a little bit. This is the lemon yellow. And I'm gonna do this top square with the lemon yellow, kinda of mix with the green, and that's okay. You'll see why. It always works out, you can't mess up art. I'm gonna get a little more yellow so it's got a little more of a yellowness to it. And then I'm gonna do this orange again. I actually have orange on the palette already. I'll just use what I already have. But I am gonna get a new brush because I'm gonna get some really bright orange in this middle area. There we go. And color in that square. And then we're gonna have all the colors on the palette and we're gonna use them to paint on some paper next while we're letting this dry for our next step. So these are all squares. Kandinsky painted a lot of things with um, squares and circles, layered, and that is exactly what we're gonna be doing. So now that we have our, our um, orange colored in here, what would be a good color for down here? I think I'm just gonna put get some white on my palette and mix it together with the yellow and get a lighter yellow for down here. So I'm gonna get another brush, mix those together. And get this down here to be a little bit of a brighter or a lighter yellow, just so I can have some contrast. So now I've got my nine squares 
all painted in. And while those are drying, and I've got all these brushes here going, I'm gonna actually move this out of the way for a moment, and I'm going to bring in some paper. So we're just gonna start with a piece of green paper. And I'm gonna grab the brush that's got the green and yellow on it. And I'm just gonna paint some pretty, um, get some blue and do a couple of different just like almost like a swatch because we're going to end up cutting from this so we're really just want some different combination of color swatches so I'm mixing the paint which is really really fun so Kandinsky was born in Moscow Russia back in the um 1800s and super super smart could play all kinds of instruments by the age of nine he played like the piano and the violin he was born into a wealthy family that sent him to the best schools possible and he ended up going to university to get his degrees in law and economics but he really loved art and um what i love one thing i love about him is that one of his one of the artists that influenced him the most was my favorite monet so he really wanted to pursue his um, his art studies. So he wanted to go back to school, and at first he didn't even get in. Like they didn't even take him as an art student. So he started doing what we all do, practicing and learning on his own. So there I've got some greens. I put that aside, and I'm going to grab a piece of red paper here, and I'm going to do the same thing with my red. So I'm going to grab this brush with the orange and red. Now with kids, you probably wouldn't have them holding three brushes at one time. I'm just doing it that way because it works for me, but you'd probably have them do, you know, one color at a time. So here I've got my orange mixed with my red for this swatch. Then I'm going to do one that's just got a lot more of the red. And then I'm going to grab one that's got the orange, the red, and grab some of this yellow and white just to get a completely different kind of shade going. And I'm going to try some purple and some red over here because I think that's going to be a fun one too. All right, so we've got our reds done and we're going to do one more sheet like this. I'm going to use the brown. So I'm going to grab ah, this one falling off. I'm going to grab the brown here and I'm going to move this out of the way. And I think I'm going to want to do on here some more yellows because when I'm looking at my canvas over there, it looks like it just can really use some more yellow. So I'm going to add yellow here to my palette and I'm going to use the brush here that's got the green and yellow on it, but I'm just going to get yellow so I can get some, yeah, that's perfect. Some brighter color here. I love that. It's perfect, perfect, perfect. And then I'm going to get a new brush because I really want to get some pink. So I'm going to grab some pink on my brush and do some pink. I like the way that brown is showing through from the paper. I'm gonna get a swatch of pink and then I'm gonna do one with pink and purple. And this one I can just do right over here. And then the next step is always my hardest step. It's the step where we just have to wait for everything to dry before we can do what comes next. So we're gonna let all this dry for a minute and we'll be right back to finish it up. Okay, so we are back and everything is pretty much dry and ready for the next step. So we're done with our paint. I'm gonna move the palette out of the way here and I'm going to put all my paints back up here because I don't need them right now. I'm gonna be using this decoupage next as a supply. But first we need to talk about circles and squares. So on our canvas here, we have nine squares. Kandinsky did all kinds of layering with paint, but for kids, it's really fun. Instead of trying to paint paint on top of paint, it's fun to do it kind of collage style. So that's why we've created these paper pieces that we did with the painting on the paper. I have a pair of scissors here, and I'm gonna cut out of each one of these different square, uh, different swatches, some squares and some circles. So, from this purple one, I should be able to get a really great square, and then I'm gonna make sure that it's gonna fit inside of one of these. Maybe this one would be a great one, and I'm gonna kinda round my edges a little bit. You don't have to, it's fun to, totally your art, your call. So that's gonna be what's gonna go next in that one. Then I'm gonna kinda of look at it and think, hmm, what color would look good on top of that? That would be a good contrast for my circle. And I'm gonna do, I think, this green right here. So I'm gonna cut this out and I'm gonna make it into a circle. And I'm gonna do the same thing here for all nine of my 
different, um, I was going to say quadrants, but they're not quadrants, all nine of my different tic-tac-toe board squares. I'm not always going to do the square first. For this one here, I'm actually going to do a circle next and then a square on top of that because you want to make it be personable to you, you know, something that, that you love and I like to mix things up. So one thing that Kandinsky believed um, is that you could express yourself through color and through shapes. And so I actually like this in the middle here. So I'm going to change my mind there, which is okay to do. And then I'm going to cut a square out to go on top of that from this red. So yeah, he believed that you could um, express yourself through colors and shapes. And he didn't just use circles and squares like we're using on this project. He used a lot of like abstract shapes too, ones that he made up that were really fun, like squiggles and dashes and lines and dots. I'm going to put that in there. I really like that a lot. That's perfect. Now I'm going to go up here to this one and I'm going to do some red. So for this one, I'm going to do a square in the background and I'm going to leave the corners on this one a little bit and turn that down a little bit more, more with the sharp edges. And then I'm going to put some purple in the middle there with a circle. And all of them don't have to have two layers. You could have three layers. You could have one layer. You could do whatever you wanted. And the great thing is when you do this with kids, they will do whatever they want. And that's okay. We want to just encourage them to be expressive and to come up with their own style, being inspired by artists, not trying to duplicate or be exactly what a famous artist was. I hope that makes sense. I think it does. So I'm going to do this one down here and then I'm going to get a yellow circle to go in the middle of that. You could also use solids for this. You could cut out um, from magazines or newspapers to do this kind of kind of project, which would be really fun with older kids. Maybe cut out some um, quotes or florals and give it a completely different look just using his technique so many possibilities with this type of art. And so here I'm getting some red. I'm going to do a circle here on the bottom again because I haven't done many of those and I want to change it up a little bit. So I'm going to do a circle over there on that green right here. You could offer kids, if you don't feel like, if they don't feel like they can cut out circles and squares on their own like this, you could offer them um, patterns or templates. I would encourage them to just kind of wing it and do what I'm doing and have it look the best they can. Um, it'll just be good practice for cutting and it just will allow them all to be very, very unique and special. So here I'm going to go over here to this one and do a square. There we go. And I'm going to use some of that green there again to do a little circle because I think a little circle in here would look super fun. Oh, I love that. And then here I'll put this one right here. And it looks like I probably need to do maybe like four more pieces. I want to get some plain old brown. So I'm going to go over here where I didn't use any paint, which is totally okay. Square around some edges here and kind of cut a squarish type shape for that top oh, quadrant. There, I like that brown and I want to get another little piece of brown here for this one too. Just to make sure that we have all of our colors represented. So I'm going to put that one in there and I'm going to do a couple of more. Let's see, let's do some pink right here and maybe some purple in there. And for this one, I think we'll do this. And we'll get a circle that's like half painted and half not. So that's kind of fun. And then I'm going to push all of my scraps out of the way. I have a brush here and I have my matte, because I don't want it to be glossy. I want it to be matte, um, decoupage. I'm going to shake it up and then I'm going to move all my pieces off of my canvas, but I'm going to set them away set them aside in a way that I have them in order so I know what goes where. So I'm just going to line them up over here like this. And that way I can know what goes where. All right, next. So this is a great, let me get it open here, product for doing collage. And kids love it. I love it. 
It looks kind of like a watered down glue, which it is. <laughs> and I love it. You're just going to use a regular brush for it. And I'm going to start down here with this brown quadrant. I'm going to brush on a good thick layer, not a puddle, not a lake, just a thick layer. And then I'm going to put my first piece down. And then I'm going to paint on top of it. And I'm going to do my green on top of that. And I'm going to do that same thing for all nine of these different um, areas on my arch. And if it looks like it's, you know, it's kind of um, folding up right there, that's okay because we're going to go back over it. And there we go. We're going to do this all the way around. I'm going to do two at one time here. Go back over here. So see, I'm just going to go back over here and make sure that's laying down flat. Go back over it. Sometimes I use my finger. It's okay. It washes right off. be so fun to do with um, photographs too. Like if you had copies of some old photographs, you could use those mixed in just to give it a lot of personality and a lot of personalization. Ah, I didn't put this down first. There we go. I'm going to do these two now at the same time. Good thick layer. Do this one. I'm going to put this down on top. And then we're going to have to let it dry um, for like a good half an hour to an hour before we add another complete top coat to it to kind of seal all of these pieces down, which is uh, what makes it really durable. So you can hang it up on your wall and it'll last for a long, long time. So his name is, is, begins with a W, but it sounds like a V because it is um, a Russian name. So that's kind of fun for kids too when they're learning about artists and still learn about where they're from and how they say their names and kind of what they were like as kids. So I think a lot of kids would be able to relate to the fact that he liked to play music and he was smart and his family was really active in the community. Those are all kind of things we want to talk about too when we're teaching kids about not just the style, but the actual artists themselves. So there we go. It's all on there. And I'm just going to go over it one time right now while it's still wet with just a thin layer just to make sure that it's all covered. And like I said, when it's dry, then I'm going to go over it again with one more final coat of the decoupage. So there we go. We are going to Clean our brush. First we'll put our lid back on this so it doesn't dry out. Clean our brush and then we'll be back to put our final coat on. Alright, so this layer of decoupage is dry and all of our pieces are in place and it looks amazing. I love it. I'm going to put one more coat of decoupage over the top just to kind of seal it and give it a finish. So I'm going to open it up. I have my clean brush here and I'm going to do kind of a thick coat here because these were painted pieces and we want to make sure that they stay in place. So I'm going to go over the entire thing and do this um, final coat. And then you have this amazing abstract work of art. So there are lots of great ways to use acrylic paints to teach kids about different artists. This is just one of the ones that DecoArt is sharing. I've been doing some other ones too, so hopefully you'll check those out as well. And try them out. Try them out with yourself. Try them out with your kids. Try them out with your friends. Great to do as a class or with a troop of um, scouts. However you do it, just give kids the opportunity to access their creativity using these awesome products. And there we have it. We're going to let it dry and it's going to be ready to go on the wall.